All right, well, I hope this records well and the sound's on. So right now, if you would please, title circles and we're dealing with conic sections. So I want you guys to write down the equation that goes with all circles, okay? So if you would please put x minus h squared plus y minus k squared will always equal your radius squared. That's the equation of a circle. Now, the most basic equation you will see is this. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's if and only if the radius, sorry, the center of the circle is at 0, 0. So if the center is at 0, 0, this is your equation. But if the center has been moved at any other place, then we have to we have to use this equation right here for the circle. So if you look over here, it says our circle is at negative 7, negative 6, and has a radius of 2. So what I'd like you to do, just in your journal, you don't have to know this to be able to do this problem, okay? But in your journal, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write the HK value is negative 7, negative 6, and the R value is 2. So I want you to put X minus your H value squared plus Y minus your k value squared is equal to your radius, which is 2, that also needs to be squared. So when you're writing an equation, when you have a negative next to a negative, that's going to change that to a positive. This is the equation that would go with this circle. So when you have an h value of negative 7, what does that mean? That's like the x value of your center. And this is the y value of your center. That's what h and k represent. Okay? This is your equation that goes with this circle. All right? So all I'm going to do is go over here, and I'm going to plot a negative 7 and a negative 6 and make the radius... 2. So on this one, oh, wrong one. There we go. So we got to go, uh, wait, wait, is it negative 6? Negative 7. There we go. And so I, have, I stretched it out. We have a radius of, what was it? Was it negative? Would I mess up? Oh, negative 7. Ne yeah, thank you. Negative 7, negative 6. Sorry. Negative 7, negative 6. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you get your correct H and K value, otherwise you'll get it wrong. Okay. So right here, graph the circle, which is centered at what? Negative 1, negative 3. So where are we going to put it at? Negative 1 and negative 3. And what does it stretch all the way out to? A negative 7. So i got to stretch it out to a negative 7. So if you're wondering, what did I just do here? This is a point. That's an x value. That's a y value. This is your center. That's your h and k. So it has this point, and it has that point right there on it. And that's how you would do the, the problem. Okay? So, guys, if I wanted to write this equation, all right? Be, I just want to make sure you guys know how to write the equation. This would be x plus 1 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals, what's the length of my radius? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that my radius right here, how long is that? 6. So I would put 36. So we're getting a little practice. Remember, this is your radius squared. So we're getting a little practice. Even though you don't have to know it yet, you will need to know it for later. Okay? Okay, one second. All right, guys, what we're going to do right now is we're going to look at features of a circle from its graph. So the, what you're going to do is you got to go down here, and the first thing we got to do is we got to look at the center of the circle. All right? So it looks like 
from my perspective, it looks like this right here would be the center of the circle. All right. So what would you guys say the H and the K values, if you can look at that? We're at a 3, negative, 3, negative 1. Okay. Well, let's think about the length of our radius. So how how long is the length of the radius? Looks like it's at what one, two, three, four, five, six. So slightly past a six. So our R value would be is going to be I would say close to it's going to be more than thirty six. All right, it's going to be more than thirty six. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be this radical forty one is the length of the the length of the radius. You're wondering, how, why would I say the, the square root of 41? All right, just yet 6.4. Okay, so if we look back at our problem that I was working on, can you guys see how this is a little bit more than 6? That's going to be 6.4, so that's going to be the length of our radius. All right, so if I'm going to do this problem, first thing I'm going to do is I'm at a 3, negative 1. That's the center of the circle, and I'm going to say, Oh, it says the circle passes through what point? Negative one six. Okay, my apologies. It told it told us it goes through what? Negative one six. So can you guys right now put this down? We're at three and a negative one. And now we're at a what? A negative one and a negative six. What I'd like you guys to do, here's a quick little way to find the distance between two points without having to use the distance formula. Okay? What's the gap? between my y values. What's that gap? 5, right? What's the gap between my x values? 4, right? That's a gap of 4. I'm going to take the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared, and that becomes the square root of 41, okay? So there's a distance formula, and so here's the distance formula, guys. The distance formula is the change in your x squared plus the change in your y squared. Now, normally, here's what you guys see. This is a long formula. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. This is the distance formula. But what I like to do is I like to do it this way, where I find the gap in my y's, I find the gap in my x's, I stick it underneath the radical, and that gives me my distance without having to do this long x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. So this is what you'll see in a textbook. This is what I like to do on my own. All right. So we'll do one more after this. See if that see if it makes sense to you. Okay. So if you guys would please, I'm not even gonna look at. I'm not even gonna look at the graph. Well, I will. I guess I need to because I gotta find the center. So my center's at a negative four negative seven okay so i'm at negative four negative seven so negative four negative seven that's my h and my k and it says it passes through what point negative five negative nine so here's what i do i just find the gap in my y's what's my gap just two that's my change in y what's my gap in my x's just a 1. Then I just stick it under the radical. I take the change in my x's, and what do I do? I square it. I take the change in my y's, and I square it, and I get the square root of 5. So I know that's going to be my answer there and my answer there. I don't know. It's a lot faster for me than doing the, just the distance formula where you have to do x2 minus x1 and all that stuff. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click on these real quick. I'm going to, a student has a question. We're going to go ahead and do do her her problem. Okay. So her problem it says the center is at what order pair? So zero comma two point five. Sorry. That's the center. So that's the H and that's the K. And what's the ordered pair that it goes through? Negative 1.5, 2.5, okay? All right, so right now, oh, 
what's the what's the what's the gap right here? <laughs> zero, right? Zero. So that's the gap is zero. What's the gap there? It's like the gap is one point five. So all I got to do is find the change in my y, change in my x. So literally, it's just going to be one point five squared. So it looks like your answer is going to be one and a one and a half. So that's the length of your radius. Because if you if you square zero, right? If you square zero, you get the square root of two point two five. And what's the square root of two point two five? One point one point five. All right. So that's the length of your radius, and this is your center of your of your circle. All right. So that's what you guys are going to do on these on the features of the circle. All right. Okay. So now the next part is understanding the equation of a circle. It says features from a circle in standard equation. So right now, here's our equation. If you can't see it, it says x minus 5.2 squared plus y plus 3.7 squared equals 49. So there's our equation in a circle. So right now, what would be your h and your k value? Your h value is going to be 5.2, and your k value is going to be negative 3.7. That's the center of the circle. And it says our radius squared is 49. So remember, this is dealing with x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So I know my r value has to be a 7. Now, if you need to, see what it says? It says round it to how many decimal places? 2, but I don't need to because it's a perfect square. So I'll put 7 here, and then I'm going to type in 5.2 negative 3.7 and that's what I do for features of a circle in standard in standard form all right so I'm gonna go over here I'm just gonna type it in make it nice and neat 5.2 negative 3.7 and this was a 7 okay Well, I'm gonna, it says it says round it two decimal places, so we got to round it to two decimal places. I'll, I'll for the top, you should be able to right here. This should be this should work no problem. What what what's my center? Negative seven and negative eight. And then if I say what's the square root of four ninths? That's that's two over that's two over three. If you take that, so if this is remember this is your what? That's your r. That's your radius squared. So if you take the square root of that, it becomes two over Three. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put two-thirds and see if it counts it wrong. Technically, you should put 0.67. I'm just going to put two-thirds and see if they count it wrong. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and type in two-thirds and just see if it happens, see if it works. So we got negative seven, uh, negative eight, oh, not zero, negative eight, and then I'm just going to type in two-thirds and see if it accepts it. Oh, good. It accepts it. All right, so I don't have to put 0.67. Oh, here's one that some students are like, wait a second, what do I do for this one? Check this out. You guys see how it says x plus eight-thirds? So I'm going to put negative eight-thirds. And if it's just y squared, that's at zero. And the square root of one is just... One. So I'm going to type in negative 8 thirds, comma, 0, and a 1. Negative 8 thirds, 0, and 1. All right, so um, this one, this is the last one that I'll do because we got to take the square root of 35, and you actually have to use the decimals on this one. So this one's going to be negative 12 because that's your h value. You're going to type in a 9, but I actually have to take the square root of that 35, which is going to be close to 6, 
but let me said 5.92, 5.92. So that's what I actually have to type in here. I got to type in the 5.92. Okay. All right, there you go. All right. Um, now this one, you have to graph it from standard form. Okay. So right now, you just have to interpret it. Now this, this won't take long, but what is the center of the circle. I'm just going to do one of these, okay? What's the center of that baby? Negative 2 and a 6. And what's the radius have to be? 3, because that says 9, right? So 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to negative 2, 6. So I'm going to slide it over. Negative 2, 6. And i got to make the radius stretch it out to 3. So we have 3 units. I don't know about you, but I like doing this more than graphing it on paper. All right. So here we're at a 3 and a 7. 3 and a 7, we've got a radius of 2. All right, here we're at 0, negative 7. So we go 0, negative 7, and we have another radius of 2. And last we have 1 and a 1. 1 and a 1, and we have a radius of 9. So we've got to go all the way out there, I think. 1, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got a radius of nine at one, one. That's how you do it. Ah, here we go, guys. Last one. It says write standard equation of a circle. So right now it gives us the radius. There's the radius, and it gives us the h and the k value. So this is the last thing that you actually have to do. So I'm going to test this out. I'm going to write down what I think it is, see if it works out with the equal sign and everything like that. So we have our H value. We have our K value. If you can't see it, it says negative 9.3 and 4.1. And so I'm going to put X minus this, which will make it a plus Y minus 4.1 squared equals the square root of 13 squared, which becomes a just a 13. I'm going to type that in, press enter, make sure that's all you got to do. Okay. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier than the trigonometry section that we did. Okay. Just, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Like I said, let me, let me, let me type this one in. Well, I'll help. So yeah. Yeah, if there's a fraction, type in a fraction, yeah. All right, so we got uh, x plus 9.3, and then I have to square it. And then, oh, please, didn't mean to hit enter. That was a close one. All right, plus parentheses y minus 4.1, but I want to make sure I square that. Don't want to forget to put the squared. Okay, equals 13. All right, x plus, got that, got that, looks good. Woohoo, sweet. Okay, so now we have to write the equation of this. Oh, this is nice. Check this out, guys. This is a cool one. We got a center. What's our h and what's our, what's our h and our k? We got what, negative 1, positive 1? Now. This is the part you got to actually use the point that they give you. There's no estimating it. We're using that point. What is the ordered pair of this point? 6 and a. Ah, this would be a good one to put in your journal here. All right. They gave you the H and the K. And they gave you the 6 and the negative 4. So now we're going to find the length of the radius. What's the gap between a 1 and a negative 4? How many units? 5. What's the gap between a negative 1 and a positive 6? That gap is 7, so we have to do the change in the y and the change in the x. Now, you guys understand when I'm finding the gap, I'm not worried whether it's you're going down or you're going up. It's just it's just the positive gap. It's the, the difference between the, the numbers. So i got to do the square root of 7 squared plus 5 squared. So 49 plus 25. And what do we get when we do 49 plus 25? What do you get? Is that 70, 74? So the square root of 
74. So if I square that, remember, this is the radius and I have to square it. What am I going to put? I'm going to put a 74 for the what? For the R squared value. So here's going to be the answer that I'm going to type in. X plus 1 squared plus Y minus 1 squared equals my radius squared. So all I did was I found this point. I took this ordered pair. I found the gap between a 1 and a negative 4 to be 5 units. I found the gap between a negative 1 and a 6 to be 7 units. I squared the 7. I squared the 5, got the square root of 74. But when you square it, it becomes a positive 74. So think of it this way. Here's a shortcut. Once you get this number, you know that's going to be your r squared value. Because the square root of it is your radius. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. See if I did everything right in my head. If I didn't, it'll let me know. X plus 1 squared plus Y minus 1 squared equals 74. All right, I think I got it. All right, nailed it. Okay, so that's what you guys are going to be doing on this one. Looks like, so basically, that's all you have to do. You're, if, you, if you have one of these problems, make sure you find the gap, the change in the y's and the change in your x's. Don't worry about whether these numbers are positive. Just find the difference between those numbers, and this will always give you your r squared value. Okay, have a good day.